Hello and welcome to Coad for Cape Goes Live. My name is Kelly Goodell and I am the Regional Coordinator for Prevention Services at Coad Early Care and Education Division. Coad has a child care and resource agency for 31 counties in Eastern Ohio. This broadcast is brought to you today in partnership with the Ohio Children's Trust Fund and the Eastern Ohio Prevention Council, both who are seeking to provide child abuse and neglect prevention services in Belmont, Carroll, Coshocton, Guernsey, Harrison, Jefferson, Monroe, Muskegon, Noble, and Tuscarawas counties. Thank you for joining us today. We are live and on site in New Philadelphia, and my guest mm -hmm. today is Kristen Betts, um, a local early education professional, who we're going to be talking today a little bit about consistency and some parenting tips. And so, um, as today we're going to be talking about consistency and, and parenting, but we would also encourage anyone watching the broadcast today uh, to offer up some other areas that you would like some parenting tips in. So today we're going to talk about consistency and we're going to talk about how parents can be very instrumental in setting and um, establishing routines and why they're important. And we're going to talk across some age groups today, but we'll probably center our focus um, mostly on infant and toddler and that preschool age so that we can provide our viewers with a little bit of just insights as to why it's so important and, um, and, and why sometimes consistency can be neglected mm -hmm. and, and, and parents' ability to kind of go with the flow and sometimes just adjust to their kids. So that's the parameters of our conversation today. And um, let's just begin with that. So let's talk about consistency and what it is. Huh. Consistency, it depends really on who you're talking to once again. It's one of those things where um, consistency for one parent or caregiver can look very different to another person. Mm -hmm. um, as a parent myself, my consistency with my kids varies. I am more on their routines and how they're functioning. So if they need a nap, you know, we'll take it. Um, now for a while, my kids always napped at the same time. Mm -hmm. But as they got older, the naps kind of varied. So if I would try to put them down and they weren't ready, obviously, it's just it's a fight. Unsuccessful yeah, and unsuccessful. stressful for everybody involved. Yep, and then, so I would just let them be up and play. Mm -hmm. And then if they got tired earlier, then they went to bed earlier. Um, but if we were, <clears throat> excuse me, out and about, and it was close to bedtime, we didn't hurry up and rush home. Um, but I know some kids get used to that schedule of you know being in bed early or having a nap time, and that is okay. But it's also okay if you veer from it a little bit because one day of not hitting those exact times isn't gonna throw off that consistency mm -hmm. completely. They may act a little bit different because their routine has changed and the consistency of that day is different. But if you get back into the same you know, consistency the next day, they'll be okay. Mm -hmm. So it's just a back and forth. And that's also going to be very child driven. Yeah. So we, child personality development, where they're at developmentally, Correct. where they're at in their learning style and where they're at in those processes yeah. are all going to affect how consistency. So mm -hmm. when we talk about consistency, you know, we talk about routines um, yeah. or the same approach to the same types of behaviors or mm -hmm. the same types of instruction yes. in the same learning environments. Um, and, and so that, as part of parenting, especially for new parents, mm -hmm. it's, you probably get a lot of different advice. Mm -hmm. um, you can read uh, different uh, styles of, yes. of parenting and so those are all very personal decisions and yeah. and, and looking at your child and, and doing a child-centered approach so how does this get me the best responses so mm -hmm. when I'm consistent um, with with a nap time yeah the child might really respond to that because they, they, they are in the it. process mm -hmm. and so the expectation is there um, I think the woman we've also been talking about consistency um, it can, we could probably talk about consistency in all of these different topics, but, yeah. you, but you and I have, have discussed discipline. Consistency mm -hmm. and discipline is um, important across the board. Mm -hmm. Consistency in routines, that can have mm -hmm. some fluctuations, but there are some places, um, as you're working with your child and learning your child, safety. Yes. Consistency and safety and teaching safety is probably pretty important. Yeah. That one pretty much, I think, stays 
doesn't change much because you don't want that to change much. So if we're trying to get children to understand, for instance, you know, not taking the plugs out of the outlets. Mm -hmm. um, if we're consistent at that, that it's not safe, it's not okay, we can get hurt, instead of just ignoring it while we see them mm -hmm. playing with it, that's not being consistent at that behavior. Because the more you tell them that it's not okay to do something and you could get hurt by that, and you mm -hmm. need to explain that, not just no, don't touch. Mm -hmm. Because when you say no, don't touch, what they hear is touch. So of course, they're like, oh, let mm -hmm. me touch that. But explaining that it could hurt us and we don't want our friends to get hurt. We don't want you to get hurt. I think it takes it to a different level of understanding them that, well, this is for me to be safe. It's not that mm -hmm. they're just telling me no all the time. Because I feel like sometimes kids feel like all we say is no. Mm -hmm. Like, no, don't do this. No, don't do this. And that automatically clicks in their brain, like, let's do it. Like, let's do that. Or when kids are standing on chairs or anything that's unsafe, mm -hmm. it's just the way you approach it. And that you do it the same way every time. Mm -hmm. So maybe perhaps using the same words. Yes, the words help a lot. And using it in the right way. So not always saying no, mm -hmm. because that's a word we try to get away from. It's very hard. I always say in the heat of the moment, the first words out of our mouth are, no, like, or don't, 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 don't do that. <laughs> um, Something very negative it and because of, of the reaction to using the yeah. example of, of so standing. Like we sit on our you know, bottoms when we're mm -hmm. on a chair. That's what a chair is for. It's not for standing. So mm -hmm. getting them to understand that this is what we do on a chair and maybe showing them an item that they can climb on that is safe because mm -hmm. that's the difference. Then they know like, oh, so it's okay to climb over here, just not on this because this isn't safe. Mm -hmm. And I think when we don't give them that second option of something to do, that's why they consistently do the same thing, climb up on the chair. because that's a point of development where they're learning to climb mm -hmm. and they want to climb but if we don't give them anything safe to climb on that's on us because we need to make sure there's stuff in the room for them to climb on mm -hmm. so redirection mm -hmm. um, as part of your yep. as you're consistently saying touching the outlet yeah <laughs> is not safe yes but here's something that for you safe. to manipulate and mm -hmm. to, to do that. So so redirection. Something like that. that if they like the fact that it's something that goes in and out, that they're pulling in and out, then get them a toy mm -hmm. that is similar, you know. And so using the same words mm -hmm. and, and and the redirection on a this is when I see this behavior, right. you know that as a mom or as a yeah. dad or as a caretaker, you're going to hear that's not safe, mm -hmm. here's what you can be doing. Yeah. So that's probably going to be, the, the that's the key theme mm -hmm. of consistency, yeah. is using the same words, mm -hmm. um, you know, catching, catching good behavior and catching behaviors that you want to eliminate. Yes. So mm -hmm. it, it comes back to the obs uh, observing the child and, mm -hmm. and being aware of, of what your child is doing. Um, when you talk about discipline, per se, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on consistency with discipline? I think there's a whole oh, realm of conversation. There is. This, this could go into a lot of different things. Um, for me, a big thing with discipline is that it, if they're at a child care center or a family child care home, it has to be very consistent there through all the teachers. All teachers have to agree on, you know, if this child does this, this is what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And you stick to that. And these are the words that we use. And this is how we handle it. Um, same thing goes for home. The issue at home is mom and dad usually have different parenting styles. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to mix that so that it's working appropriately, um, and I know my husband probably won't like that I say this, but at our home, you know, if I put the boys in their room just to separate them because maybe they're not getting along um, I can leave them in there and let them think about, you know, what's happening and understand what they're doing. And I always go back and talk to each one of them and say, do you understand what happened? Why did we act this way? Um, where my husband has a really hard time if he puts them in their room not going back and then ended up tickling them and, like, mm -hmm. being all buddy-buddy with them. And I've tried to explain to him sometimes. I'm like, that's really hard because then they don't understand what they did wrong. And it's the same thing if you put a child in timeout and don't talk to them. By doing that, you're not really explaining what happened or why they're getting in trouble. It's just, I want you in timeout and you're just gonna sit there. Well, a child in timeout, you know, their shoes go flying, like, you know, they're wiggling out of the chair. They're everywhere but where they're supposed to be. So the main thing with that is being very consistent at, 
yes, you do need to sit over here for a while to think about what you did, but there should be a conversation from the teacher, from the parent, grandparent, whoever had that child, of why they're sitting there, what happened, what went wrong, mm -hmm. and do they understand why they're there. I think that whole conversation piece with the consistency of it will either start to eliminate issues or at least help them a little bit. It's not to say that all these issues would just go away and our kids would be perfect, but then they start to realize, oh, like maybe what I did or said wasn't okay. Mm -hmm. Like maybe I should do it a different way. So you just have to have that good understanding from everybody in your household or center that this is the way we handle things and we have to stick to that mm -hmm. and not it's really hard when our little ones look at us with those little eyes like oh but it wasn't me you know to not be like oh it's okay like come on mm -hmm. it's hard so you have to hold your ground and they have to understand that what they did wasn't okay mm -hmm. so so consistency in what's acceptable behavior mm -hmm. consistency and in, into what is safe are probably yeah. some of those um, underlying kind of things that you want to be as consistent mm -hmm. as possible. Oh, yeah. um, when we talk about the routines and learning styles, that's where you can mix it up mm -hmm. and be more child-centered. Um, I think that we've brought up a good uh, conversation piece then as well is that it's one thing if you're consistent at your home. Correct. Um, and I think as parents that's hard for us too, but then when we're crossing the lines between what happens at home, what happens at childcare, um, or, or the family child provider, or grandma's house, yeah. or anybody who, who's taking that, um, really having those conversations and communication Correct. between those different environments. Um, is it, in your opinion, is it is it easier to kind of maybe take a mix and match of both? Um, just, you know, <laughs> both having, um, you know, children in child care when they were younger, yeah. and sometimes it was easier to adapt to what they were getting during the course of that day and make sure that we were using the same language. Yeah. So it's from situation to situation. How, how would you recommend that parents um, open up that line of communication mm -hmm. with either their child care provider or, you know, it could be grandma. Yeah. Like, you know, how, yeah. How, how do you think those conversations, what would, what would your recommendation be um, for that? If we're thinking of like routines or any type of learning that the kids are starting to do, with that, you have to be very open on what your expectations are for the child and what you want to happen at the child care center and what you want to happen at home or like you said, at grandma's house, wherever mm -hmm. they're going. So, I mean, we talked about potty training last week and that's probably the easiest one with consistency because if consistency isn't done with it, it's really hard to get going. So if I bring you my child and you're going to watch them for the day and I'm working on potty training and I say I want them left in their underwear, I had brought bunches of clothes so if you have to change them multiple times, like it's okay. Now for you as a provider, if you're like, oh, I don't want that mess all day and then you put a diaper on them or a pull up on them, that's not helping me as a parent because I am trying to get them potty trained and if I'm not with them through the week, I have to rely on somebody else to help me. Mm -hmm. And it's vice versa too. So if you guys at the center are working on potty training and give me my child back and say, oh my goodness, they went to the bathroom twice today on the potty, they're doing great. And as soon as I get home, I stick them in a pull up or diaper. It sends the wrong signal to the child because then they don't know like, am I supposed to be using the potty? Am I supposed to be using my pull up? Like what am I supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. So. You have to be very consistent and very open in saying, this is what I expect, this is what I want. Same with the providers. You guys have to tell the parents, you know, if, you're, if their child is potty training, you know, they've done great today. We recommend that you keep on working with the underwear and not a mm -hmm. pull-up. Now, what happens at home, we can't control it, but we have to have help. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with transferring from a bottle to a sippy cup or getting rid of binkies. Um, a lot of time, children can go all day without a binky at the center, but as soon as mom and dad pick up, they give them the binky right away. Because as parents, we know it's their comfort item, and we know that they like it. So we're like, here, have it. Mm -hmm. But they've lasted all day without it. It's just when they see us, that connection hits of, oh, I need my binky, and mom wants me to have my binky, mm -hmm. and we give it to them. So I think we have to get, as adults, 
able to like consistently be okay with them not having it or mm -hmm. it's just amazing what our brains do and how the connections are made between kids and certain people mm -hmm. that they say oh there's mom I need my binky when mm -hmm. in reality they don't really need it it's just they see you and they kind of put you two together and it goes like that so if the center is working really hard on doing something, we need to take that home with us. And the same, if the parents are working hard, then we as providers have to work just as hard because then it will work. Mm -hmm. If we don't, it's a juggle and the kids have no idea what they're supposed to do. So they're kind of in between and mm -hmm. stuck. And um, last night I talked to my, I did a training last night and we were even talking about the consistency and lesson planning with children and this can go through preschool if you even take yourself into middle school consistency on what kids are doing on a daily basis in school it can be the same things every day mm -hmm. however they're learning something new every day from those things but it's how consistent you're being at teaching it so the structure of the structure of it mm -hmm. so I've like if we're doing bubbles with our kids every day because our kids love bubbles um, we're teaching them something new about bubbles. Maybe one day we're using our language skills and talking about them. The next day we're using our fine motor and poking bubbles. And then the next day we're looking at science on how bubbles occur. So it's very consistent on what they're learning because they love bubbles, so they're going to pay attention. But we're teaching them something new every day with bubbles. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of amazing how our brain will learn new things without us even knowing. We're teaching it and they don't even have a clue that like, oh, this is a fine motor skill or this is a science skill. Like, we're making it fun. So it becomes... And then you can walk in one day and bubbles are no more, are, are no Correct. longer the excitement that yes, they used to be. Yes, we have moved on. Yeah. <coughs> and, you move and, that on. Can, and that can happen. So, you know, adjusting our, our structure mm -hmm. as adults um, and, and being adaptive to where the child is. Yep in their development, where mm -hmm. their child is in their learning yeah. um, stages, is, it can be it can be frustrating. It is, it's, it's hard for teachers, and that's what they said last night. I'm like, you know, you may finally think like, oh, I figured it out, everything that they wanna learn, and then next week, it's not what they wanna learn anymore. They've moved on, but they'll be consistent with that new stuff for a while, and then it fades away, and then they come back, and it's just with our young ages, with infants and toddlers, and even our preschoolers, the more consistent you are at the teaching the same stuff or giving them the same things, the more they learn mm -hmm. and they click. Because like I said, there's different meanings behind, there's like a thousand meanings behind bubbles or mm -hmm. blocks. I mean, you can do so many different things. So what we decide we want to teach them is from us, but we're still giving them exactly what they need and want. They want bubbles. And so you've got bubbles for weeks <laughs> like or months and you know it's just it's very consistent and I think those providers sometimes panic because they're like yeah but we're always doing bubbles and I'm like but it's okay because that's what they need and that's what they're learning so that consistency stays very consistent and they're comfortable and that goes with their routines who picks them up who drops them off um, what teachers in our classroom today if those things change everyone is kind of thrown off because they're like, hmm, this isn't my normal schedule or the normal people here. I always use the example of um, an alarm clock not going off in the morning because for us, if we're consistently waking up at six o'clock, a lot of times our body will wake us up before our alarm clock because it's used to it. Mm -hmm. But if we don't and we miss our alarm clock and we wake up and it's 6.30, our consistency for the day is off because we've already started mm -hmm. not on time. And so we'll notice like our day might be a little different for us. Kids function the same way then because they're a little off. And that's why I said, it's okay because you as an adult made it through the day, even though you got up late, a child that misses a nap or gets to bed a little bit later, they might be a little bit off, but mm -hmm. you kind of like reboot the next day, you're okay. And perhaps even at that point, not having a very structured routine teaches at, at the appropriate level yes. adaptability. Oh yeah, they get older and especially. flexibility mm -hmm. and self-regulation yes. and all of those things. So, I think what I'm hearing us talk about then is, I mean, while the routines are really important mm -hmm. um, and help setting up, you know, the structure of the day mm -hmm. and how things progress, it, it's also okay because we're teaching other skills. Yeah. And it's accepting that sometimes the consistency hasn't been there. Yeah. And and that's okay. So the more we positively accept and, and kind mm -hmm. of positively react to that change, 
um, we're also teaching very soft skills of like, okay, so we didn't do A, B, and C in a row. We did C, B, and A. And that's okay yeah. because it, it looks the same. Yep. Um, and, and we're kind of really teaching some different skills there. Um, learning and, and setting that structure in learning, mm -hmm. um, I think your example of the bubbles is, yeah, you might be doing the same repetitive routine and it seems consistent. You get tired of it because you almost get bored because like, mm -hmm. oh no, not bubbles again. Those kids aren't thinking, oh no, not bubbles again. Like, Yay, <laughs> bubbles. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, I think it, it, it just seems to be, to be, you know, taking consistency and we know consistency is important, mm -hmm. but also realizing the, the advancement that can happen when things yeah. are not perfectly consistent. Oh, yeah. And I think parents also get frustrated for like, I have to stay to this routine because my child needs this. Yes. Um, letting ourselves as adults kind of teach some of that soft skill area mm -hmm. of being flexible and yeah. being adaptable. And as long as we're responding to it in a positive way, yes. we're going to be modeling that behavior to, yeah. to our kids. Um, consistency. You know, I, it, it's, we're talking about the importance of it, but also allowing ourselves to have some flexibility with our yes. consistency is, is very important. Um, and so I think that's a good recap of our conversation mm -hmm. to say that, you know, discipline and safety and our routines and learning, those are all very important aspects of, of keeping and understanding consistency. Perhaps more so uh, safety and yeah. discipline are, are probably areas where we want to stay as consistent Correct. as possible, but allowing ourselves to to have a little bit of flexibility yeah. and, and, and adaptability in that. Um, and I think this is important information to um, not only parents, but caretakers mm -hmm. and, and anybody, grandma, yeah. if she's watching your, you know, yeah, watching anybody. the baby for the day or, or, you know, our aunts or our neighbors, you know, just being... Uh, the importance of communication about that as well yeah. can be really important. Um, so for our audience out there, today we are, we're starting and in introducing some, some parenting tips. And mm -hmm. um, Kristen and I would love to encourage you to uh, join us uh, online and give us any requests of other areas of parenting that you would like some parenting tips or some conversation topics that you would like to, to see mm -hmm. us address. Um, as always, Kristen and I will be available after the conclusion of this broadcast to answer any questions that you have. And, um, and I wanna thank you, Kristen, for joining me again today. And thank you for being such an interactive partner after our broadcast. Yeah. And I will look forward to the next time we get together. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you.